everyone. It's 2 o'clock, and let's begin. My name is Rob Altamont, and I'll be your moderator for today's Eureka webinar titled, Why There Aren't Any Club Specification Standards. The webinar will be led by Eureka's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Let me give you a few words about Jeff. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making, and the other book, Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you. And if you have any questions, use the question box located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded and will be on youtube.com slash hericogolf and on our blog in about one hour. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Hariko Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob. This webinar is being presented to touch upon a delicate subject for some of you, and that's the lack of standards in club specifications. Let me turn the slide here. Okay. What I want to go over in the brief amount of time we have today is the reason why there shouldn't be standards. Let me first say that it's the goal of every manufacturer to build in a set of specifications that will fit the average male or female golfer. However, that's easier said than done. There are several challenges to adopting one set of standards, some of which may actually surprise you. For instance, we're going to go over weight distribution or center of gravity location, stiffness distribution, component weight, and geometry. I also want to give you an explanation of why you shouldn't get overly concerned when you see that the specifications aren't all nice and tidy or don't exactly follow in a nice orderly pattern. Let me start with the prime example, lie angle. Let's say you were fit for a lie angle at three different but very reputable club fitters. One club fitter tested you and said you needed a club with a two degree upright lie. The next one said you needed standard lie. And the third one said one degree upright was fine. Let's assume that each club fitter used the same length clubs and the same starting lies to fit you with. Otherwise, this could be an hour long webinar just in, on that subject alone. One thing you have to realize is that club heads and shafts that you are fit for may have not been the exact same make and model. Before we get started, if a 6-iron had a lie of 62 degrees, this is just a point of reference and not an absolute. And what I mean by that is when we're fitting for a lie, we're doing so in a dynamic state, or what happens during the swing. The stated lie of a club is simply a measurement of the club in a static mode by placing it in a specifications gauge or a loft lie machine. Let's look at the anatomy of an iron uh, quickly. You see where the score lines are parallel to the ground, and also the sole is touching the ground. This is our basis for measuring the lie angle of a golf club. The actual lie is determined by the angle the center line axis of the shaft exits the head relative to the ground line. In this diagram, it's represented by the green line. The yellow and black icon that you see in the middle of the score line area is a symbol for the center of gravity. To let you know, it's not always located in the horizontal center of the score line area, as many are biased slightly toward the heel because of the weight of the hosel. Now the orange line represents the distance from the center of gravity at a right angle from the shaft line of the, of the shaft. Oh, and one last thing I want to go over, and that's blade length. This is represented by the blue dotted lines. It's the distance from where the shaft axis would intersect the ground line, the outermost distance of the toe. For the sake of argument, let's say this happens to be a blade style iron for a better golfer. 
The blade length may only measure 3 inches or 76 millimeters long and will typically feature a longer hosel. Now on this slide, you're going to see two different diagrams. I want you to concentrate on the one to the right for a, a, a minute, though. In this image, you're going to see two clubs. The, the diagram to the top left illustrates the club at address, or we'll say is the static mode. The club to the lower right of it is the same club, but shown what happens during the swing. You can't see it with the naked eye because of the brief period of time of the swing and the speed of the club, but the shaft will start bowing downward slightly and flatten out. Part of, part of the reason for this is that the shaft wants to align itself with the center of gravity. To the left shows a close-up, so you can keep that image in your head for a few more minutes. In this next diagram, we have superimposed a few different style irons to show the consequences of expanding blade length. The iron outlined in black is the model we showed previously, a player's club. These aren't drawn uh, quite to scale. These are just shown to provide or to, to show what happens when we alter a few specifications. But for the sake of argument, our blade length, again, is uh, 3 inches or 76 millimeters. And the distance of the center of gravity at a right angle from the axis of the shaft is 1.3 inches or 33 millimeters. The club outlined in blue may be a game improvement model with a blade length of 3.2 inches, or 81 millimeters. As you can see, the center of gravity is further away from the axis of the shaft, as well as lower as a result of the shorter hosel, typically found on a game improvement iron. The center of gravity uh, might now be uh, 1.5 inches, or 38 millimeters, from the axis of the shaft. Next, the club outlined in red may be a super game improvement iron with a blade length of 3.35 inches or 85 millimeters. As you can see, the CG is even further away from the axis of the shaft and lower. The CG might, might now be 1.7 inches or 43 millimeters from the axis of the shaft. Now, these differences may not sound like much, but it's enough that it'll alter the dynamic lie at impact. So consequently, if you'd been tested for lie with three different types of club heads, even with many of the same specifications, you may be fitted with different lie angles and be perfectly correct. One thing we haven't talked about is the shaft. Shafts that are traditionally found in a blade style iron or, or just irons generally compact from heel to toe have completely different shafts than most game improvement designs. For example, a true tempered dynamic gold shaft would be more prominent in a blade or a compact cavity back iron. The stiffness of the shaft and the tip section are less likely to bow downward in the swing than a more flexible and softer shape.